Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We'll pick up where we left off last week. We looked at last week, the fall of Lucifer. And, and in Ezekiel 28, particularly in verse 15, we find that Yahweh found iniquity in him. This wasn't the way that Yahweh created him, of course. We also took a look at the fall of him, the, the war in the Shemaim, the heaven, and how they were evicted, they were ousted by Michael the Archangel, and a third of the stars went with them, with Hasetan. In Revelation chapter 12, we looked at last week, and this time we'll get a little bit more of an understanding of some of those verses, and put it into perspective with the characteristics of the enemy, which can be summarized in the word trickery. I was thinking about that this week. Trickery. Rather, one is a liar, a deceiver, a manipulator, whatever the case in the scenario. It's trickery. It is. It is trickery. It is deceitfulness. It is craftiness. It is all of those characteristics. So, well, we, we've looked at the, the, the characteristics of Yeshua and the characteristics that we need to have. The enemy only has one, essentially. Trickery. Full and fueled by greed. For his own destruction is nigh. And as many that he can take with him to be burned up, he will. And he'll be taken many. Now let us, before we back up, before we go ahead, let us back up to where we were last week. We're going to start off in where we left off last week and touch on this again. Because we're going to show, again, there's two paths. Two paths. Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. If you would turn with me there, please, and let me know when you're there. We need to take a look at these things. We need to understand these things. We need a, a clear indication. Oh, it's a Revelation chapter 12, verse 4. Just let me know when you're there. Revelation 12, 4. All right. Hallelujah. His tail drew a third of the stars. We looked at that last week. A third of the angel of heaven and threw them to the earth. They were cast down with Hasetan. And the dragon stood before the woman, ready to give birth and to devour her child as soon as it was born. This is this last bit of the verse we looked at last week, talking about Yeshua being born. But let us focus on the beginning. His tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. A third. A third. Let's focus on a third. Let us go over to Metitiyayu. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Keep this underlined in your minds, please. It's tailed you a third of the stars. Perhaps we can glean some answers from the scripture. Let us see. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13. Let's start with verse 13. Matthew 7 13. Let me know when you're there, brethren. Hallelujah. Anybody else there? Oh, Matthew 7 13. All right. 7 13. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go by it. Many who go by it. Many who go by it. This coincides with Matthew 22:14, where it says, For many are called, few, few are chosen. I'm going to post this up right now. For many are called, few are chosen. Many are called. Many are called, and many, as Yeshua says in Matthew 7, says that many, that leads to destruction. So there are many that are called, but many will go into destruction. Now let's check out the verse 14, 714. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, or hard pressed is the way, or narrow is the road that leads to life, and there are few, few who find it. Now again, let us look at the Verse from Matthew 22:14. For many are called, but many are going to be going into the pit. Few are chosen. Few are chosen. And I went with that off memory. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life. And there few be that find it. Matthew 7:14. The way is narrow. It's not a not a wide path. It's not a four or seven lane roadway. It's a narrow little donkey path, I guess you could say. Little foot trail, single file, it's narrow. And there are few, few who find it. Matthew twenty-two fourteen says, Many are called, 
few are chosen. So you say, what's your point, brother? What are you going on about few? And we touched on this last week a little bit. But let us consider the fact that Yahweh wants to fill these vacancies. Since Yahweh doesn't like things that are void and empty, it would seem logical that the first fruits, the 144,000, are that few that will find eternal life. That they are the few that will be, that will replace those that were fallen with the fall of Lucifer. So when we look back at Revelation 12.4, it says his tail drew a third of the stars. So let's say you got vacancies on them. Here, here's angels that had duties and things to perform, and Lucifer got them all puffed up and said, oh, yeah, I like your plan a lot better than doing this and that. Well, I'm going with you. So they took on the characteristic of being puffed up, of being arrogant, of trickery, and now trickery, lying, and deceit, and manipulation is the ticket for them. That is who they are. That is what they are. So there's still places and duties that are empty. So I'm only suggesting, and I'll suggest this, that the scripture, I believe, alludes to the fact that the 144,000 will fill the third of the stars that were fallen, the third of the angels that were fallen. And I'll leave it at that. Now, let's look more about who some of the other things to to look for in in people and characteristics. There was a, a certain question, a very, very simple question that Yeshua had asked, and we can gain a lot of knowledge from this, from these few verses. If you will turn with me to Luke chapter 9, we'll take a look at just a few verses. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, 18 through 20. Luke chapter 9, 18 through 20. Thank you for posting that. Luke 9, 18 through 20. Let me know when you're there. I don't want to get ahead of anybody. All right. All right. Thank you. Now watch this. And it came to pass as he was praying, saying, his taught one's disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? They answered, said, John the Baptist. That's John the Immerser, Johan the Immerser. Some say, Eliah. Others say that one of the prophets is risen again. He said unto them, But whom say you that I am? Kepha answered, said, The Messiah of Elohim. Now, before, I'm not going to go into the common teaching of this, but this question and the response that Kepha gave leads you to two paths. It's one of two paths that you you get out of this. Because, one, where he says, who do you say I am? There are two ways to answer this. One, to believe Yahshua is the Mashiach, which Kepha did, which is a profession of faith in Yahweh's anointed that throws down the anti-Messiah. It casts him off. It throws the spirit of anti-Mashiach down, down to the pit where it belongs. Two, not to believe which is the spirit of anti-Mashiach. And if we don't believe that, let us turn to 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. 1 Yohanan 2, 22. 1 Yohanan 2, 22. Verse John in two, verse twenty-two. Let me know when you're there. Hallelujah. Who is a liar? But he that denies that Yeshua is the Mashiach. He is anti-Messiah. That denies the Father and the Son. See, this is a two-in-one package. You're not going to get out of it without both of them. You're not going to deny Messiah and walk away from the pit. But now let us consider another verse. Flip over to Second John 1, verse 7. All right. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Yeshua, the Messiah, is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an anti-Messiah. An anti-Messiah. See that? Anybody who does not confess that Yeshua is the Messiah is a deceiver and an anti-Messiah. So these are things that we need to look for and look for constantly. Now, if we go over to 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. 1 John 2. Hit a couple more of these verses. Make sure. Got it all good. Okay. Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard, the anti-Mashiach, even now many anti-Mashiach, have come by which we know 
That is the last hour. The last hour. Again, anti mashiach Even now, many anti mashiach are Roman freely. Freely. So people who do not believe in Yeshua and all that are of spirit of anti-Messiah. And again, we know that the spirit, and I was telling a, a young fellow this just the other night, he was asking me questions. He's from the, he's looking at getting all intertwined with that, uh, what is it there? The assembly of, uh, of, uh, God. But he was asking me questions and I was telling him, I said, look, this is Jesus bit the, the, the enemy has used to lure people away. I said, this isn't the real Messiah. I said, when you pull back, you gotta realize who he is and who he descends from and understand his Hebraic roots. You gotta understand he kept the Torah, followed it. He didn't tell us to break it. He didn't tell us to go eat them, have, have the, all those uh, uh, pork, pig roasts and stuff. Not every church I see always has a big sign up that says, oh, come, come join our uh, pig roast. Well, you know what they say, you are what you eat. So that tells me there's a whole lot of pigs running around in them churches there. Hey, you know, don't mean to be mean about the whole thing, but it's true. There's an element of truth there, you know. Yes, yes, flying free zone here. Absolutely. And with that said, First John 4, 3, we post it here. And every spirit that does not confess that Yeshua, the Messiah, has come in the flesh is not of Elohim. And this is the spirit of anti-Messiah which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You don't think that he, that Yeshua and the taught ones saw the spirit of anti-Mashiach? His whole nation, for the most part, cast him out. They didn't say, hey, we don't want none of this. We don't want this kind of Messiah. We don't like your program. We, we want something different. You come back and you, you send somebody else this way and, and try again. And that's the way that they want it. And too often... People want it the way that they want it. And I was teaching this young fellow that there are customs and traditions that have replaced the truth. And for them, those customs and traditions have become the truth. Now when we read this, the way that most scriptures read, confess that with with, with the other name in there, you know, we, we got a difference of who's the real Messiah and who's the false Messiah. So don't go thinking that that, that name Jesus, Jesus, and all that isn't anti-Mashiach. It is. Because that's a Greek, Latin, Englishized Messiah. It's not the real Messiah. It's not the real deal. Well, for once, I said this to somebody, and he didn't run away like Flash or something. He didn't get to step in. And I couldn't believe it, so kind of looking, is he going to pull a knife or gun out at this point? I didn't know. You know what I mean? Because people become a custom thing, but he seemed to take it fairly well. Surprisingly, surprisingly. So we also must remember, as we touched on last week, that in in no marvel, for Hasetan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Into an angel of light. Now, that's pretty powerful. But we're going to take a look at something really deep and really profound in just a couple of minutes. But I want to remind you of this, of this verse, of these two verses, before we move on. All right. Be a sober spirit. Be on alert. This tells you to be on guard, to be ready, to be prepared. It says your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking, seeking someone to devour. Now, like I said last week, do not think that because you're all walking righteous and stuff, that the enemy, that you're immune to that. Don't go thinking that. I was counseled with somebody. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go thinking that we're, that we're immune to that. It says, be First Peter 5, 8. So be of sober spirit. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. It says, be of sober spirit. Be on the lookout. Be of sober spirit. Be alert. Be aware. Be conscious. Be vigilant. It says your adversary, your enemy, is the devil. Prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Those he's already devoured, those are people that are all junked up on crack and, and heroin and things like that, that uh, can't even find the way to get out, escape out of a wet paper bag. 
She's got them. They're they're slapped, they're ensnared, they're enslaved. He hasn't got to do anything more for them, does he? So instead, who's he going to focus his attention on? Somebody that's already destroyed and at the bottom of the barrel or below, on their way down further? Or somebody that's rising closer and closer to Yahweh? First Peter 5, 9, the second verse. But resist him, firming your faith, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. But resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same experience of suffering are being accomplished by your brethren who are in the world. Resist him. Be firm in your faith. Be firm in your faith. Don't go slouching. Don't go side to side. Don't go backward. Only go forward. Forge ahead. Plow ahead. Now we'll take a look at Revelation 13. We'll spend the rest of the time there. Revelation chapter 13, because this is going to give us a lot more understanding of what is and what is to come. Last week we went through um, Revelation 12. Today we'll go through 13. We'll finish up on that. And we'll have a good idea when we conclude of what is the beginning of the enemy, the end of the enemy, and what's in between. And we're caught in between that past and what is to come in the future. So welcome to the present, I guess you could say. Revelation 13, we'll start in verse 1. We won't go into this too deep. When we go through Daniel, we will cover this, Yahweh willing. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns are crowns. And upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Great authority. Great authority. We need to keep this underlined. These are principles that are coming down the pike. And we'll take a look at, as we're coming down through this, we'll take a look at some stuff that uh, is in the works that's happening. Revelation 13.3, And I saw one of his heads, and they were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. So, think. But, when we see down in verse 8, it says, Whose names are not written, lambs look alike. Well, let us not get too ahead of ourselves. So, when you see, when you read this in the context, you think, oh yeah, this, this is pre-trib. But you gotta take the scripture in the context, in the entire, in the entirety that it is. So watch this. If you read it like this, it says, and wounded in all the world wandered after the beast. Well, there it is. The saints can't wander after, or the, the Kodashim, the elect, can't wander after him because he can't be there. Not so. Watch this. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, which worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? This is a power play we see in nations, and unfolding, and things like this. And we're seeing a lot of this happening now. A lot of this has come into pass now. And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him, continue forty and two months. Now they thought Hitler was the anti-Mashiach back in his time, because he spoke boastfully and arrogantly, and he blasphemies. However, what we're going to see coming about is nothing less than an updated Hitler version. You got the guy speaking boastfully, and we can we can look at one person in authority right now who speaks boastfully, who speaks heretically, blasphemous, who talks about the Holy Quran, who doesn't give a hoot about the Scripture, who, when quotes the Scripture, quotes it out of context. I mean, it, can anybody guess who I'm referring to? Take a shot in the dark, I guess. Oh, a man who's in great authority right now, a high, high power, and speaks boastfully, spews all kinds of blasphemy, spe- talks about reading the Quran, quoting it, misrepresents the Scripture, I mean, we see a uh, a leader now, the Obama nation. Unfortunately, that is true. But I'm going to 
share something with you at the conclusion of this chapter that's going to shake you up a little bit. And uh, Yahweh willing, trying to prepare you. Yahweh showing me, go this way. Take the brethren this way. They need to see. They need to know. So I'm doing that with Yahweh's work. Yahweh's Ruach and with his help. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Elohim to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in the Shemaim in heaven. He could very well be the false prophet, but he's laying down the groundwork any which way. But we'll cover that at the end. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, the Kodashim, and to overcome them. And power was given over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now how, how, if there's a pre-tribulation rapture, poof, you're gone, how does the enemy overcome the Kodashim, the elect? Well, they're not there. We're, we're, we're raptured out. We're, we're gone. How can you rectify or reconcile that bogus evil doctrine with this? Revelation 13, 7. And it was given unto him. And what, who are we reading about in this? The beast. To make war with the Kodashim, the elect. And to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. One world government. One world government. Verse 9, if any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. And I say this to you, brethren, if any of you have an ear to hear, I pray that you will hear this. Listen, hear. He that says, leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the Kodashim. So what? And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and spake unto a dragon. And he exercised all power, first beast before him, that caused the earth and them to dwell therein, to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. Did you see this? The deadly wound was healed. He is going to do some magnificent, powerful, miraculous things. And what are you going to do? You know how many people that think they're called, that think they got something, sitting all up in them churches, I ask them one simple question, and they go deaf and dumb. They don't know anything. They give them the most basic question. How many names be saved by? And they say one. Whose name is it? They can't tell me. They can't say Yeshua. They'll tell you, well, they'll tell you that other name, that false name. But there's, there's only false power in that name. Only enough to work like a magician, an illusion, to do trickery, to cause you just enough to believe, but just enough to lead you so far astray. It's like, if you're going to learn to fly, you're going to fly, you're going to take that, you're going to be two two degrees off course. Oh, big deal, I'm only two degrees off. Go a thousand miles and see if you're going to land at your destination. Because two degrees over a thousand miles, you're going to be out limbo. You're going to be so far off the beaten path, that you're not even going to know where you are. Oh, it's only two degrees. Only two degrees off. And I liken it onto this. Years ago, there, there's a, a steep mountain not far from where I currently live. And it was closer where I used to live. And bikers would come through here. It's called Americade. And bikers would come all over the, the country. And they would celebrate down in Lake George Village. And they'd come over the mountain. And one guy... He hit the, the white line, and there was some dirt on it, a little bit of dirt. And he sheared his leg clear off at the knee, clean off at the knee. And he bled out and died in 15 minutes before the ambulance could even arrive. He died. A little dirt, a little dirt, a few degrees off course. What does it matter? It matters a lot. It matters a whole great big bunch. In this walk, in this way of life, it matters for your salvation. It matters that you know who the real Yeshua HaMashiach is. It matters that you know who the real devil is. And that he is real. And that he will do anything to usurp what you have. And your knowledge and wisdom. And make you feel that you're down. You're not good enough. You're worthless. And everything like that. And so we need to be very mindful of that. Oh, what you're not so sure of. So anyway, 12. He that exercised all power of the first beast before him 
and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, miraculous, and again showing great signs. And he doth great wonders, so they make fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Trickery. Again, technology and all kinds of things be broadcast all around the world at this very point of time. The, the mass communication, you can speak right now and be heard simultaneously around the world. And for somebody to see this, people will say, this is the Messiah. This is the one we've been waiting for. It is him. But they won't know. Many won't know and deceive them that they dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which had power to do in the sight of the beast. They had power, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had been wounded by a sword and did live. Kind of like Caligula tried to hung his image up and have his image worship. And that didn't work, did it? Revolt, temple destroyed, chaos ensued. Likewise, we'll see much of what we've seen in history, we will see again, but on greater, bigger, more vast expanse. We'll see the technology is here for the chip, which we're going to get into in a couple minutes. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now, when you see an image come to life, you're going to think, oh, this has got to be the real deal. If you do not know who the real Messiah is, you will be duped. And that's why we need to be very mindful who's the real Messiah. And we can't take no generic, no uh, chintzy name, no phony sideshow. We can only go by what the scriptures tell us. It's always God. And our faith in them. The power to give life in the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Remember Matthew 24, as we're going through that, a lot of this is mirroring what that is talking about. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their forehead. And I'm going to come back to this in just after I finish up these two verses. And that no man buy, might buy or sell, save he that has a mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let he that has understanding count the number of the beast, for the number of the man is the 666. 666. And it equates out to be Nero Caesar. Rome. And we see America is very Roman, very much gladiatorial in every way, shape, and form. European Union forming. And somebody had sent me something, and I'm going to try to pull it up. Actually, I better not share it because I had one else. But somebody has sent me something that showed that in this Obamacare, that the mark that this, that want to implant you with these little microscopic things, the little uh, microchips, that's what they call microchips in the Obamacare. Remember when Nancy Pelosi was saying, you got to pass it to see what's in it. Well, who ever heard of being so happy to pass the law when you don't know what's in it? But they were all very glad to hear or to uh, be able to pass a law, want to pass a law, that they didn't know anything uh, what was in it. Really? You're going to make something law? But you, by the way, you got to say, hey, we just don't know what's in it. we got to pass it. Why is recognizing Yeshua necessary? Well, for you hadn't joined us up until that point, we shall go over this briefly. Okay, let us see here. My apologies about that. So anyway, in closing, we know that the enemy transforms himself into an angel of light. At the end, he's going to do miraculous things. The mark of the beast, the technology is here. After 9-11, as I began to really study the Hebraic roots in Florida, when my family and I were down there, we realized that after 9-11, people were starting to get jacked up with this chip, this microchip, in, in their by their wrist or in their their forehand. They were afraid that they'd come up missing. They wanted to know where they'd be found. Well, if you're burned up into ash, like many were in that horrific event, well, what what good's that chip going to do you? That's going to be obliterated, isn't it? So people are getting this, and, and it's going to be sellable. I was talking with somebody earlier today that when the mark of the beast comes out, 
first, right now it's being marketed. Oh, it can save you money. You don't have to have your wallet. You just scan it. You just grab what you need off the, the food shelf. You walk out and it just deducts it right out of your thing, right out of your checking. It's going to be really easy. You don't need to carry identification, wallet, money, credit cards. Probably won't even need to keep your car at some point in time. That's why it's important to know the characteristics of the enemy is that he will do what he can to throw people off, to throw you a curveball, to transform himself in a in a, a state where he mimics Yeshua and he tries to make himself be like him and to set himself up high like the Most High. Like this fellow was saying, why is it Yeshua so important? It's because salvation. And as we looked at, and every spirit that does not confess that Yeshua is Messiah, as come in the flesh, is not of Elohim, and is of the spirit of anti-Mashiach, who have heard what's coming, and is now already in the world. It's already, it's been here. People deny. They ain't got no te- problem telling you about Jesus. Nobody gets, especially in America, nobody gets persecuted for that. Walk up to a Christian, tell him that, hey, Hasidun has uh, really worked you over with this, this uh, phony Jesus name. And boy, they'll pull out the frying pans and uh, and everything else. And they will get some medieval on you. Because tradition, as I said in the beginning, replaces truth. And truth becomes nullified. And you don't think that the, 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 the trickery hand of Hasetan is in this? This is where we need to be extremely, extremely mindful. Extremely vigilant. Remember the verse that we read earlier? Be sober, spirit. Be vigilant. Be on the alert. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to destroy. When he's already destroyed them, he's looking for somebody like you and I, who's seeking to get closer and closer to Yah, closer and closer to the Most High. And he's going to say, "Oh, we got to knock these people down. We got to put them back in their place. I gotta, I gotta tear them up." But when we stay in the good graces, on found favor in the sight of Yahweh Elohim. Through the sanctified and atoning blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, he's powerless. Greater is he who is in us than huh? he who is in the world. Who's in the world? Hasetan's in the world. And with that, I hope and pray that this has been a blessing unto you, this two-part series. God has shown me to get you ready for this because the mark is here. All they got to do is if, if this is true, and I've heard this and seen this in a couple of... Um, Things have come down the line through uh, political things and, and, and other sources that says that this is in the Obamacare, this microchipping. It could be a matter of weeks, days, weeks, or months away from being implement, implemented where everything that that you know is gone bye-bye. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you have some food stocked up? Are you ready? Are you watching our survival channel? Are you learning to survive? Are you preparing your family? Or are you just reading the scripture going, ah, this might happen someday, taking a passive approach to it. But when you see these things come in the past, this is going to floor you because, yes, indeed, you need faith. Yeah, but without faith, we're all dead in the water. Faith with that, Yahweh will provide everything, all substance of life. So with that, we'll conclude and we'll say, Heavenly Avina, we thank you and praise you for each and every one that is here. Touch them, heal them, bless them, guide them, strengthen them. Give them wisdom and knowledge and discernment, Almighty Yahweh. And touch their families and heal them and bless them and strengthen them in all the ways that they need. And you know them all far better than I ever could. And I thank you and praise you for each and every one that is here. And for everyone that is stuck by us and with us through learning your word and studying it. And we seek to seek you and worship you in Ruach and in truth as your son tells us. Your son is the example and the model that we need to follow and we be obedient to you through him. And we ask this all in Yeshua HaMashiach's precious, holy, mighty name. So it is said, so let it be done.